so I am a um, uh, coordinator for uh, this project from uh, side of Institute for Environmental Solutions. And I will tell you a very little part of this uh, project, uh, only about two monitoring data, which are related to uh, today's topic about soil uh, biodiversity. And uh, here you can see uh, the basic information about the project. The project name is Climate Responsible Agriculture in Latvia. That's the whole name, but the abbreviation is Lifecraft. And uh, in total, the project uh, uh, lifetime is six years, and we are very close to the end of that project. Uh, and here you can see the finan uh, financial uh, resources and also the whole partnership, the coordinate. Uh, coordinating beneficiaries, Latvian Fund for the Nature, and the rest of the partners. Uh, we, uh, the rest of two, we are from Latvia, uh, including the Latvian Rural Advisory and Training Center. And uh, uh, the last partner is from Czech Rep Republic, is uh, Czech Center for Science and Society. And uh, here you can see the project aim. The main aim is to focus uh, on uh, climate change mitigation uh, practices applicable for agriculture in a Baltic Sea region, and then it uh, to focus more uh, this aim. The objectives was, uh, and still we are in the process to create this guidebook, uh, where we list and include all of these uh, promising um, agriculture practices. How we can. Uh, uh, mitigate the climate changes uh, in this agriculture uh, sector um, in Baltic Sea region. And then we tested also three different practices at farm level uh, uh, to test them uh, whether we can in our region to reduce the greenhouse gas uh, emissions in agriculture uh, management. And then as well, one part was uh, aimed for adapting the remote sensing uh, technologies for the monitoring, but that was in a national scale. But now I will, and yes, if you are more interested about this project, uh, uh, then have a look in this project webpage. There you can find more detailed information about all of these uh, tasks and objectives then. And uh, you ask to talk about activities. This is typical life project, the old one. So activities are uh, very similar for all of the old uh, version life projects. Uh, but now I will focus uh, more like uh, about results from monitoring coming out. And uh, one one uh, monitoring was about soil microbial activity. Uh, another one was soil invertebrates, uh, particularly ground beetles and earthworms, and then uh, much more other data, what we collected, the greenhouse gas measurements, soil uh, uh, agrochemical uh, and other data, but I will not talk about them today, but focus only on soil uh, microbiology and uh, invertebrates. So here are these uh, three uh, practices or soil management approaches, what we uh, invented and implemented in the project. Uh, and I will focus on biochar amendment and no-till farming today. And here you can see also the logos of each uh, partner who was uh, responsible to implement these uh, approaches in the project. We as institute, we are uh, more focused on uh, controlled drainage system, but there we did not collect any data for soil biodiversity. Therefore, I will not talk about that, but about uh, both uh, other methods. Uh, here is the all the pilot uh, sites of, uh, 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 of the project. And here you can see that all the no tillage uh, um, project sites are concentrated in the central part of the Latvia. And the biochar sites are a bit uh, spread. And they are just three. And I will start with the biochar amendment to explain better the uh, soil uh, microbial uh, data. Just a little introduction about the uh, pilot sites. Uh, there were three for this uh, approach. Uh, and each of the plot was, um, or the field uh, was in uh, one size, that's 0 0.4 hectares large. And uh, 
divided in four parts, where the one is reference, where is no biochar amendment in the soil, and three rest, uh, where this different kind of the amount of biochar incorporated in the soil. Uh, here you can see the amounts of that uh, per hectares. And what I want to say that uh, those three uh, pilot sites, they were different also with that, that uh, in each of the site, different kind of fertilizer was used uh, together with this biochar amendment. So it should take into account when we analyze the data. So each of the site actually is a bit different uh, how they would react. All the sites uh, in this case are organic uh, farms. Uh, and all of these uh, monitoring years, they were growing their different kind of vegetables. And here is very uh, rough summary of the results because there is a lot of data and databases, but to be focused today, um, <clears throat> these are the parameters what we uh, measured uh, for microbial activity. Uh, also, uh, a very simplified version what we expected uh, to see in the results uh, based on what we can find in other kind of literature where the biochar amendment is uh, tested and what we gain it in our results. And as you can see, then uh, mm, part of the measures, we could not see any specific impact from the biochar amendment into the soil. Uh, and uh, but for the dehydrogenized activity, we uh, saw what we expected, uh, and it was uh, quite strongly uh, relating. But especially for the spring data, what we collected, and also uh, for one specific uh, project site. And uh, here is just a few graphs. <laughs> Uh, the first one is about this average values of dehydrogenase activity of soil microorganisms. Uh, and here you can see that um, each, uh, like in spring, you see larger this activity and uh, year by year, uh, it a bit increase according also uh, this, how much the biochar is incorporated in the soil. So if the biochar is the highest amount is uh, incorporated and also this dehydrogenase activity is larger. But a different situation is for diversity index that shows the diversity situation of uh, soil microorganisms that there we cannot see very strong relation how much bi uh, biochar is incorporated in the soil. Uh, yeah, no matter whether it's spring or autumn data collected. And then uh, that was what we have for uh, biochar in this project related to the soil uh, biodiversity data. Uh, but for no-till farming, uh, we did a bit more. So uh, here you again uh, have a little introduction about uh, all the pilot sites uh, in total, uh, eight farms were selected uh, and uh, uh, 11 Pilot territories, eight of them were no-till uh, fields, and three were like reference sites. The fields where plotting was done as usual, which is the uh, common practice at the moment in, in our country. And um, yeah, and the no-till uh, practice was mostly invented in 2018. Since then, all the uh, fields are uh, used for no-till farming practice. And uh, yeah, a little bit about the soil type uh, differences. Mostly all of the uh, sites there had uh, or has high uh, clay content in the soil uh, and they're quite compacted. At least they was at the, at the beginning um, at the project. And um, all, all of those sites, uh, the uh, mainly winter cereals are uh, grown, and uh, but the rotation order varies among the sites and sometimes also varies among the reference sites. Um, and now again, the very uh, <clears throat> short uh, summary of the, of the results for soil microbial activity data. Uh, here we uh, measured the same uh, parameters as for biochar case, and again, we it's hard to 
observe what we wanted to see in this case uh, um, in microbial data. Uh, because in some cases we see, for example, the increasing, but the increasing is uh, in both cases, in no-till sites and the reference sites, uh, sites. So it means that this increasing is because of some other factors, not exactly because of the no-till practice. Um, or in some cases, in some fields, uh, the the process um, says that uh, for microbial uh, activity, it's larger and, and, and the diversity is increasing or, or decreasing, but in some other uh, no-till farming sites is opposite. So there is not one very um, uniform conclusion what we can tell from, the, from these results. And to illustrate here, there is again a few graphs, just very few, we have plenty of them. Uh, for each uh, farm and also the average uh, situation. So here you can see this uh, example of dehydrogenase activity of soil microorganisms. Um, it's very variable between the years. Uh, the trend line, yeah, it's yeah, it's hard to then uh, tell this trend line because it's so variable. And here you can see example of one farm which had this uh, which had has this reference site and uh, and uh, and then to compare these both fields uh, we can see that this increase there is this increase what we would like to see but it's in the same uh, way as also for the reference sites so we cannot tell that it's because of the no-till farming but uh, because in a uh, factor that affects uh, equally both uh, sites but for the basal respiration uh, yeah, we see increase, and then again, here is the case where we had this reference. There is this increase, but what we see, this trend line shows that for uh, no-till farming, this uh, increase is steeper or faster uh, comparing to the uh, reference site. So there is a little bit reference uh, uh, difference between the reference and no-till farming uh, with this factor. Um, and now about ground beetles. Uh, we collected uh, from soil inver invertebrates uh, these ground beetles and air swarms. Uh, uh, four years of the project, uh, starting from 2020 till 2023. Um, and um, these are the measures what we uh, uh, calculated and also what we expected. So we expected both, uh, mainly that all of these measures are increasing for these ground beetle assemblages uh, of the no-till uh, fields and also uh, comparing with these reference sites. And here again, these results are uh, at least at the very beginning of the monitoring period, we cannot see very strong differences, but what we noticed at least for species uh, richness and also with diversity, at least starting from the final year, that was the fifth year after the no-till farming uh, uh, started to practice, we start to see uh, differences that in uh, no-till farming, this uh, uh, ground beetle assemblages becomes uh, more diverse and also more stable to the changes in the species composition. Uh, for example, this is diversity at the beginning. It uh, seems that it uh, grows similarly on no-till sites and reference sites, but then in 2023, we started to see this big difference, uh, significant difference between these fields. And uh, one reason why it's so, because as well, this 2023 was the year um, where in the spring was uh, super dry, it was the second, if I remember correctly, the second driest uh, spring uh, or early summer, what we had in the uh, period where we um, measure the, or, or measure or monitor the weather forecast in our country. And uh, we would explain that because the soil conditions are more stable, that it means that these uh, dramatic changes uh, in the weather conditions uh, saves this uh, 
associations and keeps them more stable there comparing to reference sites where is usual pluffing done and then it's effect more dramatically to the ground beetle association there. Uh, living. That's why this difference is uh, more noticeable. And um, uh, for the species evenness, that, that's nice graph, which shows that year by year, this species evenness actually becomes more uh, specific and stable for the uh, no-till uh, sites, comparing to the reference sites where the ploughing is, uh, is done every year. Yes, and for earthworms, unfortunately, we can say that the monitoring results are unsex uh, unsuccessful, not because the um, the practice itself, but the uh, period when the earthworm monitoring data were collected. Uh, for financial reasons, it was uh, meant that uh, that the earthworm data were collected together when the ground beetle data were collected uh, in the same time of the period, which is uh, uh, beginning of the summer. But the last years, uh, this period was quite dry. And for the earthworms, uh, this method requires the um, moist conditions where the earthworms are um, in the topsoil layer not very deep down uh, hidden in the soil. Therefore, we could only collect some, <laughs> but it was not enough to actually uh, to see real results, what we wanted to see for, for the project. Um, yeah, and only what we could uh, calculate was abundance, but it was not very worse for, for project result explanation. Yeah, this is just, yeah, but the, uh, and and what uh, we can say that it was very impacted also when the data are collected. For for example, it seems that from this data, the 2022 is kind of the good year where the earthworms are increased. But actually, as the person who did that uh, monitoring told that it was for that year, it was very good time because the soil was very moisture. And that was basically that uh, reason why uh, he catched uh, so much earthworms in that time, but it cannot tell so much about uh, differences uh, between the sites. Yeah, and then coming to the end, the challenges, uh, what I could tell that, yeah, it's life project and life project is uh, always stressed that it's not scientific project. We, we can just measure the main uh, parameters, but, uh, as you can see, we see the results, but it's hard to uh, explain which was the dominant factor we can guess, uh, knowing from the literature and other studies, but uh, we cannot say so clearly. And also, because um, usually in scientific studies, uh, to prove some, uh, some cases, you need to select sites which are similar. But uh, that's why I showed that in, in uh, the sites were variable in the soil conditions, the soil con content, uh, then also sometimes terrain affects uh, how the moisture is uh, stored in the soil, uh, which is important factor for the soil uh, uh, organisms. And, uh, and also the management practice. If it's not always the same, then it also can, can be stronger effect than the, the practice or approach what we wanted to test it in the project. Uh, that's, that's challenges what we face to explain and, and describe these project results uh, from that perspective, what we planned at the beginning of the project. Um, yeah, and what we see as well for, for example, for, um, uh, ground beetle case, then it seems that the project monitoring program should be prolonged. And then probably we would see what we wanted to see, <laughs> that we reached this, uh, that in, uh, no, for example, no-till uh, sites, this uh, uh, ground beetle assemblages becomes uh, significantly different from those which are uh, now comparing with those fields where this bluffing intensity is done uh, much uh, much intense uh, yearly. And looking uh, to the future, what should be improved uh, if someone wants to repeat or do different kind of the studies, uh, then 
mm, yeah, should uh, plan uh, to have to be ready that these results it should probably will not be seen in first years after the practice is invented uh, because these societies needs to adapt and change uh, to conditions and it takes some time and uh, and if there is no option to select or to add and to make this for life projects uh, more um, scientific like to add more factors to be analyzed then it's very important to have pilot sites as similar as possible from different kind of the uh, soil factors and and yeah to explain them uh, uh, well to see these differences yeah that's mostly what i wanted to say thank you very much